I have this fascination with innovativeness. With that, I mean not an interest in new technologies, but rather a deep fascination with the question, why? Why did innovators come up with these incredible ideas? Why do we want to do new things and do things new? After innovations have succeeded, we often told the story of how it was done. But why was it done in the first place? It is November 2000 when the first long-term residents arrive in their new home, the International Space Station, 410 kilometers away from Earth, circling around the Earth every 91 minutes. Since then, the ISS had 89 residents. According to the European Space Agency, the ISS will have cost roughly 100 billion euro to develop, build and operate in the 20 years until 2020. This makes the ISS by far the most expensive residential home ever built and also the most expensive scientific experiment ever undertaken. Why are we spending this much money on such an expensive home? It is probably the same question which the taxpayers in the cities of the 13th century were asking to their city council or bishops who were suggesting to build these incredibly expensive cathedrals. Sure, they are pretty to look at and they are wonders of technology and they are a great testimonial to the wonderful human spirit. But don't we have more important things to do? Is it really worth it? Albert Einstein said, if I had one hour to save the world, I would spend 59 minutes trying to define the problem and only one minute trying to find the solution. Every process of discovery and innovation begins with a thorough understanding of the starting point. Dwayne Spradlin was the CEO of Innocentive, a company which is probably among the most innovative in the entire world. Its only business is to create innovations for their clients. They do that with the help of a community of more than 300,000 problem solvers around the world. Dwayne Spradlin summarized his experience of creating innovations for his clients with his problem definition method. The problem definition method by Spradlin has four steps. The first step is to establish the need for a solution. The second is to justify the need. The third is to contextualize the problem and fourth, to write the problem statement down. Only by writing the problem statement down, you can share your understanding of the problem with your teammates. And only by writing it down, you can ensure for yourself that you have a clear and succinct understanding of the problem. Spradlin's proposal is not the only famous method of how to solve problems. On the website of Mind Tools, for instance, you can find several dozen more methods of how to solve problems. However, each of them always begin with first define the problem very well. My favorite method of problem solving is the one developed by John Boyd, a US Air Force jet fighter pilot. John Boyd developed the OODA theory in the 1960s. OODA stands for Observe, Orient, Decide, Act. Boyd's theories have fundamentally changed the way modern air forces function. His main insight was a process by which air, air force pilots who had a combat problem could achieve a successful solution. First, they needed to go through these four steps of observing, orienting, deciding, acting. 
But then secondly, they need to go through these four steps repeatedly, like in a loop. And third, they need to go through this loop faster, faster than the enemy. That makes you an effective problem solver. Please read more about John Boyd's UDA theory in the materials section. You will discover in all of these methods that one question is just never part of the problem solving process. And this is the question of whose fault is it? Who is to blame that we have this problem? It is never part of the problem solution process because this question does not contribute to finding the right answer. It does not contribute to finding a solution. Problem solving is always looking forward. It is never looking backward. So we return to the question of the beginning. Is the International Space Station worth all its costs? Notice that this is a backward looking question. It is almost like the question, whose fault is it that we have an ISS up there in space? The very nature of innovation dictates that we do not know beforehand what the ISS will discover. And therefore, we cannot know beforehand what the value of these discoveries is. So, therefore, we cannot ask that question whether it's worth the efforts doing it now. What, what we can do now is to understand our need for innovation, our need for these problem solutions very deeply and very well, so that when the solution arrives, we know which problem it solves. In that sense, I thank you very much for your interest in problem identification and I wish you good luck in trying to pursue these ideas.